The Divine Nine Dragon Cauldron. Chapter 6. Zheng Tao. Ha ha, I know, he is wooing the pretty female senior who was disfigured. Most likely, he secretly complained about Chen Feng, and she found out and issued him a challenge. Among the silver students, Zheng Tao was in the top 100. He ranked about 98. Seeing that he was ranked slightly below Chen Feng, the outcome should not be that awful since he had also achieved level 2 upper tier. His abilities should not be that low. Begin the duel, the referee declared emphatically. Not only was Zheng Tao frightened, he also hated Chen Feng. He bit his teeth and roared lightly, Dragon Drill. Zheng Tao's right leg exerted a great force, and he was like a big bird soaring in the sky. His left leg turned into a drill and from the sky, he headed towards Chen Feng. Chen Feng laughed coldly and jumped backwards. Zheng Tao's leg kicked the air. When both his feet landed on the ground, he continued his attack once again. Suddenly, Zheng Tao started to foam at the mouth and his body started to twitch. His face had a ruddy color and it quickly turned pale. His body turned stiff, and he became unable to move. Using this opportunity, Chen Feng closed in on Zheng Tao with a vicious smile on her face. On her delicate right hand, she revealed five sharp nails, turned them into a ghostly claw and ruthlessly pierced the flesh of Zheng Tao's face. After that, she smeared, streaked across the flesh vigorously and gorged out a piece. Splashed with blood. Ah. My face. There were five bloody grooves that were so deep the bone was almost visible. Every bloody groove was hideous and shaped like a centipede. The audience gasped. Zheng Tao is done for. The fingernails were coated with poison. Unless Zheng Tao manages to find a cure, he will follow the footsteps of the female senior and withdraw from the institute. Chen Feng is so strange. I still don't understand how Zheng Tao lost. As Su Yu watched, his eyes turned cold. What a sinister woman. The referee frowned. According to the rules, the students could not kill one another. As Chen Feng had only injured her opponent and not killed him, swimming along the edge of the rules, the referee could not do anything to her. The referee looked at Chen Feng with detest and suddenly declared, Zheng Tao has lost. A strand of dim and silvery white color came out of Zheng Tao's student number plate and went into Chen Feng's number plate. Her student number plate had a pure silvery color free of any impurity. When compared to Zhu Se, it was slightly less superior than his magnificent silvery white color. Among the students who had achieved level 2, her student number plate was the brightest because she had participated in duels regularly and had lost very few of them. Another few rounds of duels were completed. Compared to Chen Feng's duel, none of them reeked of blood or were as cruel. Last round, silver student, Chen Feng, versus silver student, Su Yu. The audience was in awe. Sadly, it's another unlucky guy. If I were him, I would go on stage and admit defeat immediately. Since he will lose anyway, why does he still want to suffer at the hands of Chen Feng? Su Yu went onto the stage indifferently. Chen Feng laughed, Big Sister has said before that I would treat you nicely. Cut the crap, Su Yu said coldly. Humph. Chen Feng groaned coldly and leaped towards Su Yu. A layer of thin, grey smoke was wrapped within three inches of her and was clad in poison, making it impossible to touch her body. The Chura Dance. Chen Feng's body was revolving like wind, allowing her to close in quickly on Su Yu. Su Yu was not scared of her. Instead, he faced her brazenly. Idiot. You can't get close to her. Chen Feng's body is full of poisonous mist. Beneath the stage, some audience members scolded him, saying he was silly. Chen Feng smirked. Chen Feng moved backward and stopped the attack, leaving behind a large empty space. What a foolish little brother. Have you still not realized how Zheng Tao was poisoned? Chen Feng's mouth was filled with evil mockery. That face of yours, big sister will treat it nicely. Hiss. I understand now. The bottom of Chen Feng's feet were laced with a layer of poisonous substance. The spots that she had stepped on before generated poisonous gas. If an ignorant person stepped on it, he would be poisoned immediately, causing him to foam at the mouth and his body to twitch. That person would then be at the mercy of Chen Feng. Although Su Yu understood her trick, it was too late. He stepped onto the spot that Chen Feng had stepped on before, and the poisonous gas quickly surrounded him. However, it was strange. Su Yu did not show any symptoms of being poisoned. 
Instead, his lips carried a cool smile. His silhouette was like the wind, drifting away like the shadow of a cloud. He was also agile like duckweed, dodging and sweeping past the obstacles. He got within 10 feet of Chen Feng. The audience was surprised. How is it that he is not poisoned? Heavens! What movement technique is that? He was agile and elegant, as though he was taking a stroll. Even though he has just achieved the realm of level 2, the speed that he is displaying is as fast as that of a level 2 upper tier. The expression of sarcasm and mockery on Chen Feng's face froze and was replaced by an expression of shock. How is it possible? Don't tell me you brought an antidote with you. Chen Feng gasped with astonishment, but she immediately returned to her senses. She changed to a different poisonous substance every time. How was it possible for her opponent to have known which poison she would use beforehand and then prepare an antidote for it? What answered her was a pair of vast, deep and starry eyes that seemed to shine forever like the stars in the sky. When Su Yu observed her match with Zheng Tao, he understood her trick. To counter the unusual and enigmatic poisonous substance, the key was to remember the spots that Chen Feng had stepped on before. When attacking, as long as one did not step on the spots that Chen Feng had stepped on before, he would not be poisoned. Moreover, there was a limit to how much poisonous substance the bottom of the feet could carry. Hence, the poisonous gas was only effective within a small radius. Although Chen Feng's steps were fast and messy, which made them difficult to remember, within the space where he experienced a faster time flow, by relying on his space-time manipulation, it was easy for him to remember the spots that Chen Feng already stepped on. Lastly, using Cloud Shadow to move and avoid those areas, it was easy to get close to Chen Feng. Universal Stroke, shouted Su Yu. A punch and a kick, staggered like a shadow, maneuvered between one another and struck Chen Feng's chest at the same time. The poisonous mist that covered her body was spreading, causing a space free of poison to appear. If Su Yu managed to find a space free of poison, that would be his opportunity to strike. Chen Feng's expression changed, and she immediately used her arms to defend herself. When the punch landed, Chen Feng immediately felt its pain, and her arms went numb. Her mind was full of hatred, and she only wanted to counterattack. However, a kick followed straight away after the punch, and a cracking sound was heard from Chen Feng's arms. Chen Feng's mind was in a state of panic. If her arms were broken, there would be a higher chance of her losing. However, before she had time to react, a punch came again. The punches and kicks were continuous, airtight and had no openings. This time around, Chen Feng's arms were completely broken. Chen Feng screamed loudly in pain. Her scream was so loud it resonated within the entire arena. However, it was not over yet. The final kick, reverse kick. Chen Feng could not hold it in anymore. She spat out a pool of blood, and just like a rock that was sent flying by a kick, she collapsed on the floor with her mouth full of blood and fainted on the spot. As the audience gazed upon the results of the fight, they breathed in a mouthful of cold air. Chen Feng's arms, which she used to guard her chest, were caved in downwards, with a hideous bone spur that was colored in blood and had penetrated the skin. It was a compound fracture. Unless there was an elixir to restore the connection between the bone and the internal blood channel, her arms would be crippled. The arena became quiet for a short while. Hiss. What a frightening fist and leg cultivation technique. It was fierce, violent and airtight. Who is he? To be able to defeat Chen Feng, he should not be someone without a title. When the referee called for him just now, I believe he was called Su Yu. However, I have never heard of that person before. Ah, Su Yu, is he the Su Yu who got dumped by Jiang Zuching, one of the three prettiest ladies in the training institute? Wait, that's him. What I last heard was that his abilities were average, and he was unable to keep his love by his side. Hence, he changed his target to the woman of other men. But now, why is he? For him to be able to inflict serious damage on Chen Feng, then among the silver students, he must be one of the top 100 students who were aiming to be number one. No matter how one looked at it, it was impossible for him to be described as someone with average abilities. After all, there were more than 10,000 silver students in the training institute. As the audience looked at the miserable Chen Feng, their hearts started to brighten up. Although they were secretly frightened by Su Yu's ruthlessness, their hearts were filled with happiness at the same time. As a girl, Chen Feng was evil and ruthless. 
It seemed that she did not expect to meet with failure and get her arms crippled at the same time. There were only a few words to be said to her, and that was, serves you right. However, when the audience remembered the Silver King, they felt worried for Su Yu. The Silver King, Chen Feng's biological brother. Su Yu might be done for. The Silver Assessment was eight days away, and it was bound to have battles. The Silver King had the authority to issue anyone a challenge. When the time came, how would Su Yu fight against the number one Silver student, the Silver King? The referee stared at Su Yu profoundly and suddenly declared, Silver student, Su Yu, since this is your first battle, I will overlook your actions. Please do not go too far in the future. Crippling Chen Feng could be both a big and small matter. The referee detested Chen Feng for her cruelty and ruthlessness, hence he deliberately looked the other way for Su Yu. The color of Chen Feng's student number plate instantly became a lot dimmer and turned a silvery gray color. As for Su Yu's student number plate, it became a brighter silvery gray color. He was only a little bit away from silvery white. Why do I have so much martial art energy all of a sudden? Su Yu was different. In the other battles, the victors did not get as much martial art energy as him. The referee revealed a rare smile. If the challenger wins the match, he will only get 25% of the martial art energy. However, if the challenger loses the match, he will lose half of his martial art energy to the challenged. As Chen Feng has challenged you, she is automatically considered the challenger. Since she lost the match, she must give you half of her energy. Su Yu was delighted. He was able to get so much martial art energy from this one match, saving him the trouble of participating in more battles. Meanwhile, at someone's turf outside the arena, Jiang Zuching was unable to hold back the surprise she had in her eyes. She suspected her eyes were playing tricks on her. Was the silhouette of the guy standing upright in the arena really Su Yu? The Su Yu of the past had abilities that were average and was unable to go beyond level 1 peak even after training for a long time. Moreover, he might also be eliminated this year during the assessment. However, the Su Yu of the present had not only achieved level 2, he also fought against and defeated Chen Feng, a very strong silver student who was of a higher tier than him and was distinguished for her cruelty and ruthlessness. Seeing this Su Yu, Jiang Zuching felt great distress in her heart. She had no idea why, but she was unwilling to see Su Yu become stronger. It's just Chen Feng. I could easily defeat her with one finger. Su Yu winning against her is nothing incredible. Standing beside Jiang Zuching was the handsome and elegant Qin Feng, who was shaking his head with disdain. The unsettled feeling in Jiang Zuching's heart started to go away. King Er, don't worry. I have spent a huge sum of money to buy a few spirit elixirs. I guarantee that you would be able to make a breakthrough to level 3 in a very short amount of time. During the silver assessment, you will be amazing. Her graceful and pretty eyes were extraordinarily splendid, and she was over the moon. As she looked at Su Yu again, Jiang Zuching's eyes turned cold. She shook her head lightly and said secretly, the dragon and the snake cannot coexist with one another. Su Yu, we are not fated to be in the same world. My choice is definitely not wrong. The dragon and the snake cannot coexist. You, Su Yu, would forever be unworthy of me, Jiang Zuching. The two of them left. Qin Feng turned his head by accident. When he saw the silhouette of Su Yu, his eyes immediately turned cold and gloomy. As he brought Jiang Zuching around, he, coincidentally, passed by the arena in order to let Jiang Zuching witness a miserable Su Yu, who had been disfigured with her own eyes so that she would completely give up on him. However, what they witnessed was instead a scene of Su Yu so amazing that for a split second, Jiang Zuching's heart was moved. This Su Yu has grown too fast. The silver assessment will no longer be able to eliminate him. Seems like I have to think of some other ways to get him expelled. Oh, that's right, Chen Feng's brother is the Silver King. If I could get him to work for me, it will be enough to cripple Su Yu in the duel eight days from now. A cold laughter flashed through the eyes of Qin Feng. That Silver King Chen Tianan is an extremely vicious man who knows how to cover up his mistakes. He is very powerful, more powerful than many of the gold students. If anyone offended him, even if they did not do anything, the offender would still be unable to escape from his adversity. The Divine Nine Dragon Cauldron. Chapter 7. 
Su Yu became famous after he won his first match against Chen Feng. The news had spread among the Martial Arts Training Institute in the blink of an eye. Among the silver students, a ruthless figure had appeared and crippled the poisonous widow. Oh, brother Su has returned. Please take a seat, little brother will serve you tea. When Su Yu returned to the dormitory, Wu Song became a lackey, ready to be at Su Yu's service. He poured Su Yu a cup of tea, continuously complimenting him. Su Yu could tell that Wu Song's neck was dripping with cold sweat. Su Yu's victory against Chen Feng had instilled complete fear in Wu Song. Su Yu's abilities had increased and he was too lazy to deal with the spineless Wu Song, who bullied the weak and feared the strong. Get out. Stop acting in front of me. Not only was Wu Song not angry, he was overjoyed that things were not as bad as he expected. Understood. Little brother will not bother brother Su again. As Wu Song exited, he wiped off his sweat and his face was full of happiness. PFF. Luckily Su Yu isn't a person to hold a grudge. Otherwise, with his ruthlessness and ability that crippled Chen Feng, I might not even get to sleep in the corridor anymore. Su Yu sat quietly for a while and was deep in thought. I have managed to fight my way up to the top 100 silver students, effectively freeing myself from the predicament of being eliminated in the assessment. However, since Qin Feng is watching me closely, I can't even take it easy. Su Yu was grinding his teeth. He did not have any intention of winning back the feelings of the practical Jiang Zuching. However, Qin Feng was unwilling to let the matter rest and had tried multiple ways to put him in a difficult situation. This grudge of his, he would one day return to Qin Feng twofold. As such, he must frantically strengthen his cultivation base. It was for his self-protection, as well as to take revenge of what had happened today. Qin Feng, just you wait. Su Yu clenched his fists. Not only had Qin Feng stolen Su Yu's girlfriend, he also wanted Su Yu's life. If Su Yu did not have his revenge, he would forever be a good for nothing. However, Qin Feng's abilities or his family background, both were powerful and Su Yu needed to work very hard to strengthen his own abilities. I, Su Yu, am persistent. At this coming silver assessment, I will put on a dazzling performance. Su Yu had been deep in thought for a long time. He took a deep breath and set an impressive target for himself. This decision was somewhat ambitious. However, even if he had to put his life on the line, he was determined to do it. Time and tide wait for no man. Qin Feng realized that Su Yu had been improving drastically, and he would not sit back and give Su Yu enough time to train. Su Yu's only chance against Qin Feng was to fulfill all his potential like his life depended on it and work very hard to strengthen his own abilities so that he could achieve a new level of martial arts before the next predicament befell him. At the same time, after he had made a name for himself and become a promising talent, he would be valued and protected by the students. This was better than staying as a silver student who was of little significance to the training institute. As a silver student, the training institute would not be concerned whether he was dead or crippled. Wu Song, for the next eight days, I will be going out. If there are any challenges, you shall accept them on my behalf. Su Yu had prepared his food, stepped out the door and headed for the training institute's weapon pavilion. In order to practice the secret book of hundred steps piercing arrow, he needed arrows and a bow. The weapon pavilion was a place built by the training institute to provide weapons for students to train. However, it was similar to the depository of Buddhist scriptures. Every student was entitled to pick one weapon once every year. If students wanted to have a second weapon, they would need to pay two tails of silver. Su Yu had never chosen a weapon before. Since the first weapon was free, he was able to save some money. In the training institute, each silver student would receive one tail of silver every month to pay for their daily expenses. Hence, they could only save a few copper coins and were unable to pay for anything else. When he entered the weapon pavilion, it was full of people scattered around everywhere. Su Yu took a quick look around the weapon pavilion and found that there were four kinds of mainstream weapons, knife, sword, gun and rod. Besides the weapon pavilion having a great number of these weapons, there were also many types of them. There were so many mainstream weapons that Su Yu had to walk into the deepest part of the pavilion before finding a few big bows that were impaired and had traces of dust on them. He did not know whether to or laugh or to cry. 
Su Yu weighed the bows and chose a lightweight bow that had an elastic bowstring and was easy to pull. His body was not very strong. Hence, a bow with a tight bowstring did not suit him. The power of the bow and arrow was dependent on many things. First, the quality of the bow, its material, flexibility, strength and toughness. Second, the bowman's arm strength to determine the range and the speed of the arrow. And finally, the bowman's eyesight. If a bowman possessed very strong and powerful arms, it was no use if he couldn't hit his target. On the other hand, another bowman might have weak arms and his arrow could only travel slowly. However, as long as the arrow hit its target, it would be counted as being more powerful than the previous bowman who shot many arrows and yet missed all his targets. Su Yu's arms were not that strong, but his eyesight was first class. As such, with him, the power of the bow might not be weaker than that of a very muscular man. Suddenly, Su Yu heard a sound which pierced through the silence. When he turned his head to take a look, he found a graceful and beautiful white-shirted lady standing in the empty and spacious weapon pavilion square practicing archery. That square was given to the students who chose bows as their weapon to test the power of their bow. Behind the lady there was a big fellow with a rough face. He was holding a quiver and teaching her archery skills with a smile on his face. Ah, Miss Chia, you are naturally gifted, your archery skills are extraordinary. As your instructor, I have nothing more to teach you. The big fellow was an archery teacher. Su Yu had a few impressions of this person. The Martial Arts Training Institute had lessons that taught students how to wield a weapon. Su Yu had seen this instructor teaching some students archery from afar. However, he used to have a very bad temper. He would frequently beat and scold students who were stupid, which was completely different from how polite he was now. Moreover, this teacher's surname was Jiang, and he was brothers with Jiang Zhishi. Su Yu recalled the day when Jiang Zhishi wanted to look good in front of Duke Qin. Without any concern for the pain of his frail body, Jiang Zhishi grabbed him and brought him over to Duke Qin. As Su Yu recalled this scene, he felt unhappy. Su Yu stopped looking at him and started to recall the secret book of hundred feet piercing arrow on the spot. Rather than saying this was a cultivation technique, it was better to say that this was knowledge of archery. As such, it was easy to comprehend. Although an hour had passed, in the time turbulence that Su Yu was in, he had been recalling the content of the secret book of hundred feet piercing arrow for ten hours and he was then able to recite it by heart. He looked for a few ordinary iron arrows and went to the shooting area eager to try out his skills. He took a deep breath and calmed down. He squatted down a little, and was as firm as a rock. This was to reduce the recoil when shooting an arrow, so that the accuracy of the arrow could be increased. One hand was holding the bow, while the other hand placed the arrow on the bowstring. He concentrated all his strength onto both of his arms and held his breath while his eyes focused on the target that was 100 meters away. The essence of the secret book of 100 feet piercing arrow was that when shooting an arrow, the practitioner must become one with nature, concentrate deeply and channel all their energy on the iron arrow. This process required the practitioner to harmonize the inner strength within his body repeatedly, so that he could achieve a state of tranquility. At this stage, the practitioner would then be able to concentrate all his energy into the arrow and fire it off without being affected by any forms of interference from the surroundings. When Su Yu released his fingers, the iron arrow made a whizzing sound which pierced through the silence and turned into a fragmentary shadow, striking the target that was 100 meters away. However, Su Yu was not satisfied with the outcome. The arrow had landed on the edge of the target, and it was quite a distance away from the bull's eye. His actions attracted the attention of the white-shirted lady who was engrossed in practicing her archery skills, as well as Master Jiang who was teaching her archery. Master Jiang raised his black eyebrows. Where did this kid with no manners come from? What do you think you are trying to do when we are practicing archery? Su Yu had nothing to say. It was obvious the lady was very prestigious. In order to win her favor, Master Jiang did not tolerate anyone who disturbed their practice. However, the target where Su Yu shot his arrow was on the other side of the weapon pavilion square, and it would not affect the lady in any way. What am I trying to do? I am trying to practice my archery skills. If there were rules that students cannot practice their archery skills here, then I would leave this place immediately. Su Yu was calm and collected. He leisurely took up another arrow and started to aim at the target again. 
Master Jiang put down the quiver that he was holding and quickly headed towards Su Yu with an angry look on his face. Master Jiang, you need not do anything. Let's continue, said the lady softly. Her voice was soft and delicate, making it pleasant to listen to. As she was talking, her bright eyes shot a glance at Su Yu's posture. She felt that it was strange. Is this your first time practicing archery? As Su Yu was engrossed in practicing archery, he lightly nodded his head and answered her unintentionally without lifting up his head. Yes, this is my first time. The lady smiled and nodded her head. Not bad, you were able to hit the 100 meter target on your first try. Master Jiang looked Su Yu up and down, shook his head and laughed. His posture is no good. He probably only learned the fundamentals and then came here to practice. I guess it's luck that the arrow hit the target just now. Regarding Master Jiang's words, the lady decided not to comment. As for Su Yu, he did not hear anything. He remembered the important aspects of the secret book of 100 feet piercing arrow. However, he lacked the mastery of all those aspects. Hence, he needed to continue practicing to master those aspects. The second arrow landed on the edge of the target like before, but it was slightly closer to the bull's eye. What? The lady was stunned. With Su Yu's posture, was it really by luck that he actually managed to hit the 100 meter target twice? Each time after, the arrow landed closer to the bull's eye. The lady's face was full of astonishment. The first and second time could be by luck, but if the arrows landed on the target five times, how could it still be luck? Moreover, Su Yu's posture became more refined and he started to have a style. Master Jiang's rough and black eyebrows started to twitch, and he stared at Su Yu as he continued his practice. Su Yu was wrapped up in his practice. However, from the fifth arrow onwards, Su Yu found it difficult to get even closer to the heart of the target. Any arrows after that landed away from the red heart of the target. At first, he became better as he practiced. His skills indeed improved, but for some reason, he became unable to progress. There was always a distance between the landed arrow and the bull's eye. Instead, there were two times that his mind was unsteady and was not focused on the accuracy. However, this confusion actually made him hit the bull's eye. The lady signed secretly as she thought that she had met an archery genius. Master Jiang was surprised. He laughed a laughter that was secretly filled with contempt. Seems like he is another lecher. He must have known that Miss Chia liked good archery skills and often came here to practice. As such, he secretly practiced a bit by himself and pretended to be someone new to archery to attract Miss Chia's attention. There had already been at least one or two of this kind of people. The lady's eyes, that were as bright as water, lightly shot a glance at Su Yu. She could not help but feel a threat of detest towards Su Yu and went away in a flash. I shall take my leave now. My mind feels unsettled. The white shirted lady lost interest in him and took light and graceful steps. As she passed by Su Yu, she shot a glance at his bow by accident. She was startled and her face revealed an expression of astonishment. Let me see your bow. The lady's face had a strange expression. When Master Jiang looked in their direction, his face revealed a strange expression as well. Su Yu initially turned his head to glance. However, he realized that the person standing beside him was a very beautiful lady. She looked innocent and gave off the impression that she was indifferent to fame and gain, as though she was a female deity who had no faults. When she walked in this world, she was calm and noble. Any filthy beings that appeared in front of her would melt away. A celestial beauty was what Su Yu could think of to describe her. She was a girl who did not belong with the human population. Looking at her, she was about 14 or 15 years old, similar to Su Yu. She had a pair of bright and snowy eyes which were so clear that they touched the heart of the people. It was as if within the extremely cold weather, a snow lotus, which was rare and difficult to find, had bloomed with a purity that did not belong to the human population. When faced with such a pure and fine pair of eyes that were free of any impurity, Suyu's mind felt respect for her. She could be seen from afar and one should not be disrespectful to her. Su Yu did not hide the fact that he became absent-minded for a split second. With his deep and bright eyes, which were magnanimous and natural, he gave an apologetic smile, sorry, please forgive me for being so impolite. This is my bow. The celestial beauty gave off an expression that she was indifferent to fame or gain. 
She did not mind what Su Yu had done, as she had encountered similar situations, and smiled. The generosity of Su Yu left her with a good impression. In the split second that Su Yu was stunned by her beauty, she could tell that it was the first time he had seen her. He was not a lecher who had an ulterior motive to attract her attention. As the celestial beauty took the bow, her snowy eyes started to look at it. Her smooth and soft hands were like jade and they lightly caressed the bow. Within a short while, her eyes were filled with surprise. Master Jiang went towards them and also looked at the bow carefully. He was also stunned. It can't be. The Divine Nine Dragon Cauldron. Chapter 8. Mister, when you chose this bow just now, no one told you that this is a defective product that had been discarded. The Celestial Beauty asked in a surprising tone. Those worn out bows on the table were defective goods, the quality of the material, bowstring, accuracy of the bow and so on, had serious problems and were cast aside, ready to be disposed of. However, it was very strange that the young man managed to use this bow and hit the 100 target five consecutive times. With a thread of suspicion, the Celestial Beauty herself used the bow and shot an arrow. In the end, even with her good archery skills, she still missed the bull's eye. Moreover, the arrow did not even hit the target at all. Su Yu's mind emitted a feeling of shock. Which scoundrel placed the defective goods over there? Try shooting with my bow. The white-shirted lady removed a huge, fragrant, scarlet bow that was hanging on her shoulder. The quality of the bow was commendable. When looked at from afar, the bow not only looked like raging flames, it also looked like a red jade. As Su Yu held the bow in his palms, he could feel a lukewarm sensation that came from the bow itself as well as the residual warmth from the celestial beauty's jade-like hands. This is a good bow. Even though he did not know how to appreciate bows, his instinct told him that the bow he held was good. He looked forward to using the bow. When he tried to pull the bowstring, he realized that the bow did not require a lot of strength and was suitable for a non-muscular man like him or a woman. With great concentration, Su Yu focused all the energy in his body to his arms. He revolved his crystalline pupils to their maximum and could see the 100-meter bullseye clearly. Whiz. A bright, clear and sharp noise pierced through the silence of the weapon pavilion square. Boom. The iron arrow had hit the bull's eye. Moreover, it had hit the most center part of the target which had the size of an eyeball. The power of the hundred feet piercing arrow was just so much. The celestial beauty revealed an expression which showed that Su Yu had met her expectations and she was amazed. Indeed, it was the problem with the bow. You are really amazing. In just half an hour, you transformed from nothing into an expert in hundred feet piercing arrow. Master Jiang was surprised. However, he still felt that Su Yu was a lecher. He thought that Su Yu was already highly skilled in archery and he deliberately pretended to be a newbie so that he could earn the favor of Miss Chia. However, he could not deny the fact Su Yu was an archery genius, as he possessed the technique of hundred feet piercing arrow at a young age of 14 or 15. Su Yu heaved a sigh of relief as he had managed to execute hundred feet piercing arrow. Thank you fairy. I will take my leave now. Su Yu needed to speed up his training. As he left, he returned the bow back to the celestial being. Mr. Su, if you feel that this bow suits you, you can have it. In the weapon pavilion, there are no bows that you can choose from as new bows are still being made. The celestial beauty was generous and she laughed quietly, suggesting that she was indifferent to fame or gain. Su Yu was startled. Even though they had never met before, the celestial beauty gave him her precious bow. It was obvious that this bow did not belong to the weapon pavilion, it was the celestial beauty's personal bow. Su Yu muttered to himself, took over the bow from the celestial beauty and thanked her sincerely. Since I borrowed your bow today, I will return it back to you one day. May I know where you stay? When the time comes, I will return your bow back to you. It's fine. This bow belongs to you now. The celestial beauty laughed, indifferent to fame and gain, and took her leave swiftly, leaving behind a delicate fragrance. As Master Jiang could not hold back his laughter anymore, he smeared, Kid, when something good comes your way, just accept it. There have been many luchas, yet this is the first time that Miss Chia had given her personal bow away as a present. However, you were still not satisfied and even tried to pay her a visit at her house. Don't waste your time, she is not someone that a person of your caliber can make friends with. 
Su Yu laughed indifferently. He was too lazy to explain the misunderstanding that Master Jiang had. No matter if it was Jiang Zhishi or Master Jiang, he hated this pair of brothers. Su Yu carried the bow and went to the mountain that he always trained in. However, he did not stop at the usual spot that he always trained at, he continued going deeper into the mountain. The martial arts training institute was built along the extension of the Twilight Mountains. By passing through the mountain behind the training institute, one could enter Twilight Mountains. There were many wild beasts living there. There might even be demonic beasts. The so-called demonic beasts referred to the wild beasts in the mountain which had devoured the universe's miracle mineral plant. Under the influence of medicine, they started to develop intelligence and also become a more superior type of wild beasts. These demonic beasts were extremely dangerous, as not only do they have high intelligence, they were also gifted with impressive abilities. Su Yu entered the Twilight Mountains for two reasons. Firstly, he wanted to increase his abilities by experiencing actual combat. Secondly, he wanted to hunt for wild and demonic beasts so that he could earn silver tails to buy spirit elixirs which could strengthen his body and raise his inner strength. The period before the practitioner could make a breakthrough to level 3 of the martial path was considered as the period to refine one's body and the practitioner needed to strengthen his body to a certain extent. The spirit elixir was commonly used to refine one's body. As it was made with many kinds of rare ingredients, it was very expensive. A single low grade of spirit elixir cost a hundred tails of silver. The training institute gave one tail of silver every month. By subtracting the cost of daily expenses, there would only be a few copper coins left. As a child that came from a poor family, Suyu had absolutely no way of coming into contact with a spirit elixir. As for those who had financial support from their families, even 10,000 tails of silver was nothing to them. As for gold students, they would get 100 tails of silver every month. Even though they sit at home quietly and do nothing, they could still get spirit elixirs to allow them to easily strengthen their physique as long as they asked for it. As for me, I still need to go into the deep and old mountainous forest to fight with the wild and monster beasts. Su Yu recalled that in his previous life, it was an age where one had to depend on his father's wealth and prestige to be successful. He did not expect this world to be the same. I don't believe that if I put in ten times more effort than the rest of you, I won't be able to catch up. Su Yu's heart had a feeling of dissatisfaction. After half a day, Su Yu entered the twilight mountains. Hiss. Su Yu could hear a faint noise. Su Yu immediately took precautions and revolved his crystalline pupils to their maximum to take a look around his surroundings. Suddenly, about 10 feet away from him, at a space below a few fallen leaves that was hidden from view, there was a snake that had a color similar to the leaves and it was quietly gliding towards the direction of Su Yu. The snake had dark yellow eyes, a triangular head and was scarlet in color. It was the seven-step poisonous snake that was famous across the world. Ah, Su Yu's silhouette was like a wind, and the shadow of his leg was like a whip. Russell. The seven-step poisonous snake was like a rope that was sent flying in it fainted after hitting the trunk of a tree. Su Yu leaped towards the snake and took out a small knife which he had prepared. With the small knife, he carefully removed the snake's gallbladder and soaked it inside a wine bag. He then swiftly removed the snake's skin and its poisonous fangs, bundling it meticulously. Lastly, he removed the snake's meat and kept it properly. The snake's gallbladder, skin and poisonous fangs could be sold for around 10 copper coins. As for the snake's meat, it would serve as Su Yu's food. 100 copper coins can be exchanged for a tail of silver. Su Yu was lucky, the moment he entered the mountain, he obtained 10 copper. For the next 5 days, Su Yu leaped through the trees. Just like Cloud Shadow, his movement was agile and natural. It was also as though a duckweed was floating gracefully in the sky, capturing the attention of those who caught a glimpse of it. He revolved his pupils to their maximum, searching for wild beasts that he could kill in exchange for money as he moved. When the night came, Su Yu hid himself in a cave along a small lake. He started a fire outside the cave, deterring wild beasts from approaching it. Two seven-step poisonous snakes, five wild rabbits, two wild chickens, three local chickens, two pangolins, one wild wolf, two wild boars and one big golden eagle. 
Su Yu counted his harvest, and roughly estimated that it could earn him about 1,200 copper coins, which is around 12 tails of silver. Sure enough, experience counts. I was able to earn a year's worth of money that the school would have given me for support within five days. Su Yu was satisfied with his returns over the past five days. In addition, he was most satisfied with the changes in his body. The shortcut to success is to put one's skills to practice. These words are indeed authentic. He did not feel any fatigue for the past five days. Within his realm, he had unknowingly achieved level 2 upper tier of the martial path, which was just a few steps away from level 2 peak. At the same time, he had also achieved stage 3 lower class in universal stroke. His universal stroke used to consist of four layers of attack with both his fists and legs. However, as of now, it had increased to eight layers of attack. When universal stroke was at stage 3 upper class, it would be able to do 16 layers of attack. When it was at stage 3 peak top class, it would be able to do unlimited layers of attack, meaning that the punches and kicks could go on continuously forever until the enemy became unable to sustain himself. There was also good progress for Cloud Shadow. Initially, Su Yu's Cloud Shadow was at stage 1 lower class. However, he had then successfully achieved the realm of stage 1 upper class which had a speed comparable to someone who was at level 2 peak. Su Yu had also achieved the highest degree of perfection for 100 feet piercing arrow. He was able to hit anything within 100 feet, his archery skills were exquisite and comparable to an archery expert. Su Yu's progress was not only thanks to the abilities of his eyes, it was also thanks to the excellent quality of the scarlet bow which made the bow easy and convenient to use. I am indebted to the celestial beauty. When I return this bow to her one day, I will definitely repay her. As Su Yu held the scarlet bow which gave off a warm sensation, his heart was filled with gratitude for the celestial being. Crash. A distinct sound of trees crashing could be heard. It seemed as though a big monster had caused the mountain forest to shake. At the same time, a faint sound of humans could be heard. Su Yu's expression changed. With this kind of phenomenon, was someone fighting with a very strong wild beast? A ray of light shone through Su Yu's eyes. He then extinguished his fire and disappeared into the darkness. For Su Yu, darkness was no different from daytime with the help of his pupils. He activated Cloud Shadow and started to leap between trees. Not only did he look like he had the shadow of the white clouds, he also looked as though he was a duckweed floating in the sky, strange and shrouded in mysteries. After three minutes, Su Yu landed on a big tree and hid himself within the thick branches where he could not be seen. When he looked down, he was in awe. Below him, there was a large scarlet python that was so huge and sturdy that Su Yu gasped. The python's body was as big as a water bucket and it appeared much stronger and tougher than Su Yu. Not only that, it also had a head so big that it could completely swallow Su Yu. What truly surprised Su Yu was the fact that the huge python was covered in flames. Moreover, at the areas that the python had been to before, almost all the trees around those areas had been burnt. It is a demonic beast. Su Yu's pupils shrunk. If it were a normal python, why would its body be covered in flames? Only demonic beasts would show this kind of phenomenon. Although this snake was a category 1 demonic beast, it had extremely frightening abilities. From observation, its abilities seemed semi-matured and it was in a realm that was comparable to a human who had achieved level 3 upper tier, it was a demonic beast that Su Yu had no hope of defeating. The good thing was that below Su Yu, there were three people who were fighting against the huge scarlet python. Among the three people, the purple-shirted young lady was at the realm of level 3 lower tier, while the petite young lady wearing a light yellow dress and the green shirt young man was at level 2 peak. The three of them worked together and had managed to trap the huge scarlet python. Hurry up. Once we catch this fire dragon, we would be rich. This fire dragon can be sold for no less than 1,200 tails of silver. The petite young lady wearing a light yellow dress was shouting loudly and throwing needles at the huge scarlet python from a safe distance. At the same time, she was also scared and excited. 1,200 tails of silver. Su Yu felt a rush of excitement. That was ten times the amount of money that he had earned for the past five days. However, Su Yu was speechless as the three people were in a dire situation. 
The purple shirt young lady and the young bodyguard looked pale as they had expanded almost all their energy. On the other hand, the huge scarlet python which the small child referred to as fire dragon was very strong and powerful. These three people had used most of their energy to trap the snake. This was not a good idea, as they might lose their lives. After all, the fire dragon was in a realm of level 3 upper tier. As for the three people, the purple-shirted young lady was at level 3 lower tier, while the young man and the petite young lady wearing a light yellow dress was only at level 2 peak. Russell. The fire dragon was intelligent, it seemed to be able to tell that two of them were physically exhausted. Its eyes were filled with craftiness. After avoiding the combined attack of the three people, it raised its giant tail to a great height. Just like a whip, the fire dragon swung its tail around its surrounding violently. The strength of the giant tail was so powerful it was as though it could topple the mountains and overturn the seas. Upon witnessing this, Su Yu felt that he was suffocating. As the purple-shirted young lady and the young man had expanded all their energy, they were unable to avoid the attack in time. At the same time, they spit out a mouthful of blood and were sent flying backwards, hitting a tree and fainting on the spot. The fire dragon was cunning. Rather than taking that opportunity to swallow the two persons who had fainted, it opened its big and bloody mouth and threw itself at the petite young lady who was still standing, preventing her from escaping. The petite young lady's expression of excitement froze. At the same time, she was so scared that she turned her body and ran, screaming at the top of her lungs, Ah! Chelsea, please save me quickly, it bit me. However, both the purple-shirted young lady and the young bodyguard had fainted. The Divine Nine Dragon Cauldron Chapter 9 The Fire Dragon made a beeline for the petite young lady. Sensing a crisis approaching her, in the midst of panic trying to keep the snake away from her, she subconsciously took a silvery white-colored ball out from her sleeve. Bang! A noise as loud as a thunderbolt could be heard. On top of the tree, Su Yu's eardrums were ringing. In addition, his inner strength was quivering and he almost fell off the tree. Immediately after that, a great amount of energy exploded, causing his surroundings to shake violently. Hiss. The fire dragon was completely enveloped by the silvery white ball's explosion. At the same time, it gave off a mournful cry. Half of its head was blown off and the remaining half was covered in blood. Seven inches away from the head, a big piece of the snake's scales had come off, revealing its flesh. The intense pain the snake felt had caused it to become more ferocious. It wreathed its body crazily and dashed towards the petite young lady. It opened its mouth wide and was about to devour a delicate and lovely small sheep. Su Yu secretly shook his head. The power of the petite young lady's silvery white ball was frightening. It was definitely a very expensive life-saving treasure. Under normal circumstances, the explosive power of the ball might even be able to kill someone of level 3 peak of the martial arts. However, the petite young lady was too panicked. Seven inches away from the snake's head was the snake's heart. If she had aimed for that spot just now, the snake would be dead. Seeing that the situation was dire, Suyu took out his scarlet bow, revolved his pupils to their maximum and aimed at the vulnerable spot. There was an injury there that due to the snake's scales peeling off. Aiming at it, Suyu shot an arrow there abruptly. Hiss. The arrow had hit the target. However, it did not penetrate the heart as the snake's flesh was too thick. Even though the arrow had hit the spot, it was still a small distance from the snake's heart. The fire dragon gave another morning cry. As it endured the pain, it lifted up its head angrily and looked at the human who hid at the top of the tree and shot it. What are you looking at? Evil demon. Su Yu's heart felt cold as he had no way to defend himself against a demonic beast, which was at level 3 peak. Without any hesitation, Su Yu shot another arrow. This arrow was very accurate and it landed on the tip of the feather arrow that was stuck in the spot. The two arrows were joined like a string of pearls. Immediately, the feather arrow went another three inches into the snake's meat and pierced the heart of the snake deeply. The fire dragon groaned. It opened up its mouth and spit out a mouthful of a black poisonous liquid. Bits and pieces of the snake's fangs were mixed in the poisonous liquid. Su Yu's expression changed and he hurriedly moved his body behind the tree's trunk. Thud. He clearly felt something penetrating the tree's trunk behind his back with sudden force. When he looked back, he saw that the fire dragon was on the floor writhing in pain and it was gradually nearing its death. 
He only leaped towards the snake after it had completely stopped moving. As for the petite young lady, she seemed to be knocked unconscious from the impact of the explosion. Su Yu heaved a sigh of relief and without hesitation he removed the fire dragon's gallbladder, fangs and skin which were worth the most money. After having done this, Su Yu looked at the knife he was holding in amazement. The fire dragon's skin was much harder than expected. He was rejoicing in happiness. Luckily for him, the silvery white colored ball that the petite young lady used had blasted off the snake's scales at the seven inch spot, revealing the snake's flesh. If not for that, his arrow alone would be unable to pierce through the thick and sturdy snake skin. When Su Yu got up and was about to leave, he heard a faint groan coming from behind him. When he looked back, he found that the petite young lady's face was very pale. Her forehead was full of sweat and she was breathing so heavily that her chest was moving up and down continuously. This is not good. She has been poisoned. As Su Yu did a check on her, he found that a piece of the snake's fang, which was covered in the black poisonous liquid, had pierced through her clothes and went into her chest. Before the fire dragon died, it had spit out a big mouthful of poisonous liquid and fangs as a counterattack. The petite young lady had been injured by the fangs, causing her to be poisoned. Without hesitation, Su Yu undid the young lady's clothes. When he examined her, he found that at the right side of her chest, a small piece of fang had pierced through her clothes and skin into her flesh, mixing the black liquid with her blood and contaminating her wound. At the area near the wound, the flesh had started to turn dark brown, signaling that the poison had started to spread within her body. Once the toxin entered her heart, even a supernatural entity would be unable to save her. In such a critical situation, saving the injured person is more important. Su Yu's hands moved as fast as lightning, with his index and middle fingers meticulously removing the piece of fang that penetrated her flesh. Fortunately, the wound where the piece of poisonous fang was is big. Hence, it does not require me to cut open her skin. Otherwise there would be a long-lasting scar at that spot. As Su Yu analyzed her wound quickly, he secretly nodded to himself. After which, he squatted down and leaned off the blood on the top of the wound. He then opened up his mouth and started to suck out the blood which had been contaminated by the poison. As the unconscious young lady was being rescued, she seemed as though she felt the pain and her body was shaking lightly. Su Yu's mind was clear. He sucked out a mouthful of poisonous blood with force and before the poison could enter the blood vessels of his oral cavity, he quickly spit it out. After which, he lowered his head and started to suck the blood out from the wound again. Only after the sixth mouthful of blood, when the color was bright red, did Su Yu stop sucking her blood. At that moment, Su Yu felt that his mouth was a bit numb, as a small amount of poison had entered his blood vessels. However, this was all worth it as the beautiful lady's breathing had stabilized and she was only in a state of unconsciousness, with her life no longer in danger. Su Yu squatted down, covered the beautiful lady with her clothes and left immediately. He felt that by using this method to save the girl, instead of gaining her gratitude, there was an 8 or 9 in 10 chance that his actions would be misunderstood, which might even put his life in danger. After all, that purple-shirted woman was at level 3 lower tier. Moreover, he was in a deserted area. With the beautiful lady's orders, the purple-shirted lady could easily serve as a witness against him. What are you doing? When Su Yu was about to leave, that young bodyguard stood up unsteadily and unexpectedly, spotting a stranger moving about sneakily. At the same time, the fire dragon that they were fighting was stripped of most of its valuable parts. The young bodyguard was furious. Which thief has stolen our war games? When he was unconscious, he could faintly hear a thunderous noise. In his mind, he knew that the young princess had used her trump card to kill the fire dragon. However, he did not expect that upon waking up, he would find the young princess unconscious and the most valuable parts of the fire dragon stolen. Su Yu did not turn back. He remained vigilant and made use of the opportunity to tear a piece of cloth to cover his face. After which, he left immediately without hesitation. He did not expect the small amount of poison in his body to take effect, causing his body to become less agile and made him unable to use shadow cloud smoothly. Where are you going? Making use of this opportunity, the young man at level 2 peak started to chase him. Su Yu turned back and said in a cold manner, HMPH. I was the one who saved all of you. You had better check the state of your partners. 
The young bodyguard with boiling with rage. Thief. How dare you? You injured my master and stole our prey without saying anything, yet your mouth is still full of lies. Considering that you are at level 2 upper tier of the martial path, how is it possible for you to kill the fire dragon? You are definitely someone who injures others and steals their prey. Take that. Ferocious Tiger Fist. The young bodyguard jumped into the sky, and just like a ferocious tiger descending from a mountain, threw himself towards Su Yu. Ferocious Tiger Fist was a very powerful medium level cultivation technique. Compared to Su Yu's universal stroke, it was a level higher. Su Yu was enraged. One does not get thanked for his kindness. Universal stroke, Su Yu's body became agile. He continuously threw punches and kicks in unity at the young bodyguard. A punch and a kick, staggered together like a shadow, maneuvered between one another and landed on the chest of his opponent at the same time. Having been hit by the punch and kick at the same time, the young bodyguard mourned in pain, and his imposing manner, like a ferocious tiger descending from the mountain, disappeared instantly. However, before he could react, another punch landed on the exact same spot. The young bodyguard was both startled and angry. He positioned both his hands in front of his chest. When his opponent stopped his attack for even a moment, he would use that opportunity to counterattack. However, his opponent's staggered punches and kicks continued on, one punch and one kick, landing on the same spot every time. The punches and kicks continued until the last attack, when Suyu streaked his leg across the air like a fragmentary shadow and the kick landed on both of the arms of the bodyguard fiercely. Ah! The young man could no longer sustain himself. Both his arms were hurting severely, and his body was sent flying backwards about 5 meters, causing his eyes to be filled with astonishment. His opponent was at a mere level 2 upper tier, yet still managed to defeat him. That strange mixed combination of fist and leg cultivation technique was definitely a basic level cultivation technique, yet it had the power to suppress him. The reason Su Yu was able to defeat him was largely attributed to the fact that the young man had been through a tough battle and had used most up of his energy. Combined with the fact that he had just woken up, he was unable to display his true powers. After sending the bodyguard flying with a kick, Su Yu immediately used Cloud Shadow. It was as though he had the shadow of the white clouds and was like a duckweed floating along the river and sea, capturing the attention of those who caught a glimpse of him. He disappeared into the trees. Su Yu had to leave as the purple-shirted young lady with the greatest abilities had woken up. Li Minghai, what happened? The purple-shirted young lady covered her dizzy head, and stood up unsteadily. She had only seen the shadow of a man who sent Li Minghai flying and then escaped hurriedly. With an ugly expression, he exaggerated the situation and explained it to the young lady. The purple-shirted young lady was shocked. However, she was not concerned about the fire dragon. Instead, she was more concerned about the young princess. She went towards the young princess and examined her. When she confirmed that the young princess's life was not in danger, she heaved a sigh of relief. However, as she was meticulous, she discovered that the young princess's clothes were a bit untidy and the blood stain on the young princess's chest was a sight. Lastly, there were a few mouthfuls of dark red blood as well as a piece of the poisonous snake's fang beside the young princess. The young lady seemed like she had thought of something and her face turned pale. She said in a deep voice, Li Minghai, you are to leave now. When he left, the young lady removed the princess's clothes. After which, she saw the wound caused by the poisonous fang as well as a trace of dark colored skin, traces of being poisoned. However, the blood contaminated with poison had been removed, and the young princess's life was not in danger. Immediately, as she stared at the markings which suggested that someone sucked out the young princess's blood to save her, her mind started to put together the puzzle pieces. She then instantly understood what happened to the young princess. With signs of anger, the young lady looked in his direction and said coldly, Sinu Keen, why didn't you stop him? The young princess's body is priceless, how can she accept the fact that her body had been touched by a man? How can she retain her good reputation? If Duke Xian Yu found out about this, he would be as furious as a thunderstorm. Russell. With the sound of the clothes fluttering against the wind, a wizened old man with a dull expression appeared out of thin air. From the very beginning, this wizened old man had been standing in another tree. However, Su Yu did not realize it. 
This old man's level of abilities was so frightening that no words could describe him. He was a martial arts expert that was secretly protecting the young princess. No matter how hard Duke Xianyu was on his daughter, he would not take risks and allow his daughter, whose abilities were weak, to go into the mountain without any insurance. As such, Senior Qin was a martial arts expert who was secretly sent to protect her, and he would only take action when the young princess was in a life or death situation. The Divine Nine Dragon Cauldron. Chapter 10. Having heard what the young lady said, Senior Qin had a dull face and laughed lightly. The young man was saving the young princess and not harming her. According to the agreement, I can only protect her when she is in danger, otherwise I would not interfere. Anyways, even if I were to take action instead, I could only use that indecent method to suck out the snake's poison. Young lady, would you have preferred this old man use this mouth of his to touch the young princess's priceless body? Senior Keen laughed lightly as usual. The young lady was left speechless. She then bit her teeth. Then, do you remember what that young man looked like? Senior Keen lightly shook his head. No, I do not. That kid's movement was very agile. My angle was not good. From my perspective, I could only see his back view and his silhouette after he disguised himself. The young lady was furious. She could not help but feel worried. We are dead now. Duke Xian Yu will definitely be as angry as a thunderstorm. Returning to the outside world, at a town in the Xian Yu prefecture, a shadow of light flashed through the people's eyes. Su Yu covered his face with a veil and went to a dark alley. In the martial arts training institute, he heard that in the alley, there were black merchants who bought materials that came from unknown origins through illegal sellers. The fire snake's materials were very valuable and could fetch a very good price. However, he understood that if he sold these materials openly, he would get himself into trouble. As the young lady was at level 3 lower tier of the martial path, he could not reveal himself. Old man, do you want materials? Deep inside the alley, when Su Yu saw an old man holding a toad-shaped smoking pipe, an idea flashed through his mind. The old man twitched his eyelids and said, You have found the wrong person. I will sell my illegal materials to you at a cheap price. Su Yu's mouth wore a smile. He understood that the old man was being cautious, causing him to be blunt. Su Yu then took out a piece of the fire dragon's poisonous fangs. The old man's eyes shone brightly and he spoke with a soft and amazed voice. Demonic beast materials. He was astonished. The young man in front of him was only at level 2. How was it possible for him to kill a level 3 demonic beast? As he thought about the illegal materials, he understood that they came from a questionable origin. Follow me. The old man opened a small, inconspicuous door and brought Su Yu into a secret compound. As Su Yu could tell that this old man had been buying illegal materials for a very long time, he was not afraid of the old man plotting something against him. Is that really the fire dragon? As the old man with the smoking pipe looked at the 20 meters long gigantic snake skin, his eyes filled with excitement. The old man with the smoking pipe quoted Su Yu a price after calculating for a while. For the gallbladder, I will give you 50 tails of silver. For the poisonous fangs, I will give you 100 tails of silver. For this length of snake skin, I will give you 500 tails of silver. The total will be 650 tails of silver. Su Yu laughed coldly. Old man, on this bright and sunny day, you have a black and evil heart. Are you not scared that you would be struck by lightning on this sunny day? You are only willing to give me 650 tails of silver for materials that are worth 1,200 tails. If that is the case, then I will look for other people. Within the Xianyu prefecture, there are many others that are willing to buy illegal materials and not just you alone. The old man with the smoking pipe was ashamed. Su Yu was a guy that knew the ropes. 900 tails of silver. Deal. The old man quoted a black market price. Su Yu thought to himself, from 1,200 tails of silver, the price had dropped by 25% and it was not worth it. However, these were the prices in a black market. Deal. However, you have to give me a bit of the snake skin as I want to make armor out of it. Su Yu's eyes were filled with wisdom as he tried to bargain with the old man. The head of the old man shook his head as though it was a rattledrum. No way, that would be too much of a loss for me. Su Yu smiled and said, how about if I bought a few spirit elixirs from you? 
This way, you would not take any losses. The spirit elixirs sold by Black Merchant were 10% cheaper than the market price. For a low-grade spirit elixir, it would cost 100 tails of silver in the normal market. However, it would only cost 90 tails of silver here. It was a good that one could not find easily. Silver students came here regularly to buy the cheaper spirit elixirs. The eyes of the old man with the smoking pipe shone brightly. How many spirit elixirs do you want? Three low grade and one middle grade. Su Yu said, for a middle grade spirit elixir, it would cost 500 tails of silver normally. But here, it would only cost him 450 tails of silver. Combined with the four low grade spirit elixirs, the total cost will be just 900 tails of silver. Ha ha. Deal. The old man took out two jade bottles, filled with low grade and middle grade spirit elixirs respectively. After confirming that the spirit elixirs were real, Su Yu removed a length of the snake skin and left. Right before he left, the eyes of the old man shone brightly and gave Su Yu a token. Ha ha. Kid, old man likes people like you who are straightforward. Take this token, go to the town's biggest dongle and artisan shop and look for Master Zhang Zhe, he will make you the perfect armor. Take it as an additional reward from this old man. When you have first class goods, please sell it to me again in the future. The old man smiled and closed the door. Su Yu looked around his surroundings. When he reached the end of the street, he threw the token away. After which, he removed his disguise and disappeared. After two hours, the old man was happily making an inventory of the components of the fire dragon. Bang! His door was kicked open and twenty murderous-looking black-armored soldiers who had all achieved the frightening realm of level 5 dashed into the compound. They stood at both sides of the doors respectively, as though they were welcoming a person with very high status. On the chest of the black-armored soldiers, there was a totem of a hawk carved on each one of them. Only people belonging to the imperial family possessed this totem, it was their symbol. Moreover, in the Xianyu prefecture, there was only one person authorized to bestow the totem onto the armors of the soldiers, Duke Xianyu. He was the most powerful person in the Xianyu prefecture. After the respectful welcome of the black armored soldiers, a handsome and dignified man with a gloomy expression entered the compound with his hands clasped behind his back. He saw the scarlet snakeskin on the floor. Is this it? A middle-aged man tilted his head and looked at the purple-shirted young lady behind him. Beside the young lady, a beautiful lady wearing a light yellow dress had hazy eyes full of tears to the extent that they were red and swollen. She kept on sobbing, as though she had experienced a great grievance. Having heard what the middle-aged man had said, the beautiful lady took the lead and looked. At the same time, she started to cry again, angry and embarrassed. This is it. As expected, that scum had brought the materials to the black market to sell them. Who sold this to you? Where is the guy? The middle-aged man gave off a powerful and frightening vibe, intimidating the old man with the smoking pipe and causing his face to turn pale. The old man's knees turned soft. His eyes were filled with fear and shock. He got on his knees and groveled repeatedly, Duke, please forgive me. A commoner like me didn't know that these materials' origins were connected to your people. I deserve to die, I deserve to die. The middle-aged man clasped his hands behind his back and stood up. His face was calm, but his eyes were burning with anger. Answer me, who sold this to you? Where is the guy? The old man said, it was a young man. He put on a disguise, hence I could not get a good look. Suddenly, the trembling old man remembered something. As though he had found his last hope, he said, Oh yes, I gave him a token. Perhaps, he had gone to Dongle and Artisan's shop to make his armor. The old man was quick-witted, he knew that he was smart to give Su Yu the token. Investigate the Dongle and Artisan's shop now. Bring this old man away and continue to interrogate him. Duke Xian Yu's eyes were burning with extreme anger. When his daughter was unconscious, she was taken advantage of. As her father, how could he not be angry? He understood that the guy who saved his daughter had good intentions. However, to his daughter, this was a matter of chastity and he needed to capture the man to give his daughter an explanation. The black armored soldiers marched mightily towards the Dongolan artisan shop and did a thorough investigation. Duke, no one has come here before. One of his soldiers gave him a report. In no time, another soldier was holding a token. Duke, 
This token was found at the corner of an alley. The guy must have been very cautious and threw this token away. Duke Xiongyu's face turned very sour and slammed the table angrily. What a cunning kid. Firstly, he brought the materials to the black market and sold them. Even so, he did not forget to disguise himself. He was crafty enough to throw away the token and not reveal himself at the Dongolan artisan shop, preventing anyone from finding out who he was when they followed the clues. This guy was very cunning, he hid himself profoundly which made himself untraceable. As of now, there were only two pieces of information regarding him. Firstly, his fist and leg techniques were good. Secondly, from the prediction of the fire dragon's dead body, this guy's archery skills were top-notch and he had the ability and accuracy to hit the tip of another arrow. Go and find out who the young geniuses are who possessed excellent archery skills. Duke Xianyu stared at a distance with anger, he would not give up until the matter had been resolved. The beautiful lady was the young princess of the Xianyu prefecture. Her eyes were red and swollen, and she fiercely bit her own silver teeth. I must catch that pervert. That thief. I will bite him to death with one bite. He actually dared to, dared to do that to me. Boo hoo. I don't want to live anymore. At a tea house close to Dongolan Artisan Shop, Su Yu had changed into a clean and new robe that was completely different from the one he wore when he was in the mountain range. Even if Li Minghai were standing in front of him, he would still be unable to recognize Su Yu. He leaned against a railing, quietly drinking his tea and secretly waiting for people to start looking for him. He wanted to know who the two ladies and the man were. In addition, he also wanted to know whether they had the abilities to easily find out about the old man with the smoking pipe and track him all the way to Dongolan Artisan Shop. From this, he could secretly find out whether he had offended someone with frightening power so that he would not need to worry about future consequences. However, he witnessed a scene which made him gasp. Duke Xianyu, Su Yu's body started to tremble in fear, and his forehead was completely covered with cold sweat. That two ladies and the man were actually related to Duke Xianyu. To be able to alarm Duke Xianyu and him to come out personally to settle the matter, the beautiful lady who was crying had to be someone who had very close relations to Duke Xianyu. There was even a possibility that she was the princess of the Xianyu prefecture. Thinking that the person he touched was actually the daughter of Duke Xianyu, Su Yu had thoughts of suicide. Su Yu regretted his decision to save the beautiful lady. Be it in his past life or in his current life, anyone who saved people out of kindness might not end up with a good ending. I am done with this. It will be difficult for them to find out my identity. Hopefully they treat it as a misunderstanding. In the future, I will live in seclusion and the chances of my identity being exposed would be low. Su Yu sighed and returned to the training institute. However, he did not return to his dormitory. Instead, he entered the training institute's training room. Entry to the training room was permanently free, and to a poor student like Su Yu, opportunities like this were rare. However, the training room was split into different classes as well, lower class and upper class. At the upper class training room, there was a better environment and a spiritual pool. By training in the spiritual pool, the practitioners in a strength and body would become even stronger. Sadly, there were only 10 of these rooms. Only the room at 10 demon students as well as privileged students were allowed to use them. For poor students like Su Yu, they could only gaze at them and lament at their own insignificance. Creak. Hey, it's you. What are you training? A voice that was pleasant to the ear and sounded as though it was indifferent to fame and gain could be heard. Su Yu tilted his head and cupped his hands in gratitude. I have seen you before, fairy. In his mind, Su Yu felt strange. Could it be that the Celestial Beauty was also a student of the Training Institute? In addition, she came out from the upper class training room. Could she be one of the ten demons? Or was she one of the highly privileged students?